and thou Solomon my son, know thou the God of thy father and serve him with what? A perfect heart and with a willing mind. Yeah. For, for the Lord searches all hearts and understanding all the imaginations of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. Now understand that. Do we understand that? If we seek after the Lord, he will make sure you find him. This ain't no hide and seek and you don't find God. If you truly and diligently serve in the Lord, seeking after God, he will make sure that you find him. But if you forget, let's look into that. It said, but if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off. Not for a little while, but how long? Now, he was writing unto Solomon because they got to understand the Lord and Solomon had a different kind of relationship than some other people in the Bible. And so what? Because the Lord said he was one of the wisest men he ever known. And so Solomon was in a much uh, different place than we were because it's saying if you forsake God, he'll cast you away forever. Same on today. If we turn away from God, there's a possibility. Now, we live in a day and age of grace and mercy. We ought to be thankful for that because judgment in the Old Testament was final. Matter of fact, throughout this Bible, judgment was final until the Lord came on the scene. You know, if, if something was, if something was, if you was convicted of something or whatever, the judgment was final. But we live in a day and age, the Lord realized that man can't do it by themselves. They're going to need help. I tried to leave it up to them with instruction, but they couldn't do it. Can you just, can you imagine all the sins that was in the Old Testament that would cause you to die? There wouldn't be nobody left. The world would be a, a much smaller place. Population-wise, it might be the same size as on a, on a global standpoint, but population-wise, it'd be a lot smaller. Because he said he's telling Solomon, "If you for, if you forsake me, I will cast thee away." Nobody want to be cast away. Nobody wants to be pushed to the wayside, forgotten about. So we got to always remember uh, to be obedient. Let's look at Matthew chapter seven. Are there any questions so far? Comments, concerns, anything? Amen. Matthew chapter 7. Let's look at verses 7 and 8. Because if you seek after God, he will make sure that you find him. So verse 7 is saying, in Matthew chapter 7 is saying, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Not and it shall be open unto you. For everyone that asketh, receiveth, and he that seeketh, findeth, and to him that knocketh, it shall be open. Now what is the it that he's talking about? Anybody want to take a crack at it? What is the it that he's talking about? We're talking about Solomon too, writing this stuff. So what is it? Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. When you understand God for yourself, no one can take that from you. And we shouldn't let anyone change our mind. If we get our understanding from the scriptures and from what God has done and with you and for you in your life, no one can take that from you. So wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. To know God is very important. Because when you know a person, you know their expectations. You know the things that they like. You know the things that they will put up with. It's like having a best friend. Best friends usually know a lot of not everything about one another. They know where all the skeletons are. You know, so it, it's bad when best, best friends fall out. Because then they want to hear your dirty laundry and, and all of those things. But if you know God for yourself, I can't come in here and say, well, no, he meant this, he meant that. Because you got scriptures that you lean on and say, well, no, that don't change the scripture. You might want it, want it to say these things, but that don't change these scriptures. And that's what happens a lot of days. That's why the Lord had, um, had warned us about false doctrines. Because there's so many out there that's telling us, you don't have to do this, you don't have to do that. But yes, you do if it's written. 
Yes, you do, if it's written. We can't have step now. It's so important right now, if it had never been any more important than before. But it's uh, the most important thing right now for us to be obedient to God's word, all of it. Not just the parts that's easy to follow, but all of God's word, those tough situations, call up the word of God. Because obedience is what's gonna get us through. Obedience is what's gonna be the most important thing that makes the difference whether God says yeah or nay when we're called into judgment. Have I been obedient to God's word? How do I be obedient to God's word? The Bible says not. And it shall be open. Seek and you shall find. God will make himself found. It's not a game. I will make myself found so that anyone that desires to be saved, anyone that's desiring this salvation is readily available. This is not a class struggle. The Holy Ghost doesn't discriminate. The Holy Ghost is not dependent upon how much money you got. Like things of the world are. I can't walk into a, a car dealership and get the most expensive car ever made if my money don't say I can afford it. But I can walk through these doors with not, not a dime in my pocket and receive the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And it's the yes. most important thing you'll ever own. Hallelujah. If you don't believe me, Hallelujah. try it for yourself. Try it for yourself and then think about not having it. Hallelujah. So we have to be mindful of that. First and foremost, as Christians, now when we weren't saved, we didn't know nothing. We was just doing our own thing. But at Christ, as when, we, when God saved us and he touched us, he changed us. He changed our thoughts. He changed our priorities, believe it or not. Your priorities change when you got saved. Because priority number one now is to make sure you keep that relationship with, the, with God. And so it's very important that we hold on to that. I've, I said a few weeks ago, your soul is the most precious possession you have. Because it's all about eternity. It's not about the now. It's about eternity. Now we can, we're blessed in the now if we're obedient. But eternity is where our ultimate blessing is. Amen? All right, let's go back on um, Proverbs chapter 3. Verse 7 says, Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Well, they did this to me so I could get them back because the Bible says, an eye for an eye. Doesn't that sound easy? Why, why do we want to interject the Bible when we want to do dirt? Why do we want to interject the Bible? Not, and on top of it, we don't even read the whole scripture. You know, But they'll say, well, the Bible says, an eye for an eye. But the Lord has already said, vengeance is mine. So you have to forgive those. You know, so it's saying, be not wise in thine own eyes. So don't think that just because they did you wrong, you can pay them back. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Payback is evil. Payback is evil. Amen. You know, and you know, I, I, I tell you, before I got saved, I used to want to pay everybody back. You did me dirty, it's coming. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna make sure I get you back. Not only am I gonna make sure I got you back, I'm gonna let you know why I'm getting you back. Just to remind you, you don't, you don't do that to me. And when God said that, that, vengeance is mine. I'll get it in the end. In the meantime, you, I get the glory out of you being obedient to my word. Let's look at Romans 12 and 16. Romans 12 and 16 tells us, be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceit. Yes. Verse 17 says, recompense to no man evil for 
evil. That's that payback I was talking about. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. So let men see that I have the grace of God on me. Let men see that my life is now led by the Spirit of God. Well, what did God do when they was persecuting him? He took it. What did God do when they condemned him to the cross? He went. He could have put a stop to it at any time, said, I'm not going through this. But he showed us that we're going to have to go through some things and understand that anybody that tells us every day is going to be a ray of sunshine, whether you saved or not, every day ain't a ray of sunshine. People is going through right now today, saved and unsaved. But the difference is, as a saved person, we have hope because there's a coming out for us. Even in the midst, I might be going through something because this is going to be a testimony for somebody else or I'm being used as an example of how to even walk through the midst of trouble. I can make it in. And God gets the glory in that. God loves and understands that if you be obedient to my word, I made certain promises that I have to keep. Amen. I don't go off on my word, go back on my word. That's why we have to understand that judgment from the Lord is final. Because there's no taking back. But we live in a time where he's allowed, he's allowed us over and over through his grace and his mercy to get it right. Grace and mercy. That's why I say thank you, Lord, for another day. Anything that I messed up, make sure I get it right this time. I got another chance. Because some people are out of time and out of chances. So it is what it is. Amen. All right, back to Proverbs. Now, if you be obedient, if you're obedient to God's word and you depart from evil, verse 8 says, it shall be health to thy neighbor and marrow to thy bone. It's renewing of your body and strength. It's a refreshment. I told somebody, I, I, I remember one time I was having a conversation and someone was, they were struggling with, in, with something. And I told me, he said, you know, it's no greater feeling than to know that you're in line with God's word. There's no greater feeling when you can confidently, confidently say, I did everything, and it's a day-by-day -day thing. I did everything that the Lord told me to do. I'm in a good place in my life. I want to continue to be upright. And when you do those things, it says it's, it's nourishment to your body. So it ain't just about food intake, vitamin supplements. It's not about that. When we're talking about the spiritual body, we're talking about the nourishment of our soul. Yes, yes. Feed your soul. Your soul is the only thing that should get overweight. Amen. All right. <laughs> you can feed it as much as you want. But that's built because that's building your relationship with the Lord. You know, everything else has to be done in moderation. But we can get all the spiritual food we want. Thank God for that. Because he said, if you seek it, you shall find it. If you ask for it, you should give it. That's why we don't worry. We shouldn't worry about the material things. Material things are nice to a, to a certain extent. All material things ain't even good for us. Amen. But going back to what I said earlier, the material things come when you're obedient to God's word. So strengthen and build up your soul first. Because you're going to need that in a battle and in a walk. You know, and, it's, and in every battle is not physical. It's not, not come to fisticuffs. Not about getting down in the dirt with somebody. Sometimes we have mental battles. Because the devil is good to get in your ear and try to plant that seed of doubt. And so we have to be, we have to be girded up in those things. Put on the whole armor of God, as it says in Ephesians 6. Be prepared for anything. Because our battles, sometimes most of our battles are internal. Because the flesh wants to do one thing. And the Spirit is telling us sometimes just to be still. Take it. Take it. Let it roll off. Keep it moving. So we have to be mindful of those things. But the Lord said, if you do these things, excuse me, if you do these things, it shall be health to thy neighbor and marrow to thy bones. It will fill you up. 
It says, verse 9, it says, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. Recognize where your blessings come from. Amen. People will say, well, I did this and I did that. You couldn't have done anything of what you talk about if God didn't allow you. I worked hard for all what I got, but the Lord had to wake you up each and every day for you to go to that job and work hard. Let's not forget that. You know, I, yeah, you might have did the physical work, but who gave you the strength to do that physical work? So why not acknowledge God? And look, look at the Lord. I'm not even going to use first fruits. I'm just going to look what the God asked for in general. The Lord said, I don't care how much money you take. I love you so much. You just give me 10% of it, and you keep 90% of it. Now, if, I'm in a, if I make a deal with somebody, or with one of you, and I say, all right, we're going into business together. I'm going to take 90%. You take 10%. Who going into business with me? Doing the same amount of work, doing the same leg work, but I'm only willing for you to take 10% and, 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 and I take 90%. I don't think I'll find a business partner. But because God knows that I'm the creator and the giver of all things, have all that you need, just give me 10% of it. Now, I don't know about you, but I think I can do all right with 90% of what comes in. Amen. If you can't, then something wrong. Something is wrong. But that's what the, the and, and why do we do these things? Because we recognize that God allowed this for us. If you could imagine, there wouldn't be no need for fundraisers or anything if everybody just did their 10% to the Lord. I believe that. I believe that. But, and, it's all, and it's not even about the church. It's about us being obedient to God's word. You give that 10% happily. Watch God bless you. Right. Won't even miss it. You won't even make that same 10%. You think you murmur and complain about it, but what happens if God said, okay, you keep the 10% and save it? People don't have the discipline. You can take it off. Well, I ain't got to give it, I don't have to give it to God. I'm going to put it in the bank. I guarantee that bank account will still be low in most people's account. God said, all I just need, I don't care what you get, I don't care how much you bring in, I just take 10%. And so he says how we can honor him by doing those things with thy substance and with thy first fruits. But we get things and we forget. Take care, take care of the Lord. I wonder how many people tied off of that stimulus. I, you know, I'm not asking for a show of hands. I'm just throwing that out there to give you something to think about. You, you know, because it's, God will always provide. And that's what we, and when we understand that God's going to always provide for the people that have been obedient to his word. So if you take it off the top, you won't miss it. I guarantee you. You won't miss it. I told a story about how before I got saved, I was paying tithes. And I was going to go home. And I thought it was going to be a fight. Because we weren't tithing or anything. And you know, so I had geared myself up. Like, I'm going, I'm going to do the 10%. I don't care what nobody's saying. I'm ready. But God had already made a way. I went in and I said, hey, I think we ought to start paying some tithes to the church. And I'm, you know, I dug my heels in and clenched up. I'm ready to go. I got some choice words for you, too. <laughs> and all I got was, okay. See how God worked? And I haven't looked back since. And I thank God for that. I think, and he's always, you know, it was some t there's been some lean days too, but God always made a way. And every time I try to tell, I, every time I tell that story, I get excited and get ready because I look back over it and God has always made a way. And he's still making a way, even in these tough times, he's still making a way. So we don't have anything to worry about, saints. We are completely covered. It's so important to stay obedient to God's word because he fulfills his promises. So you do what's instructed of you, and he, he's faithful to take care of you. Amen. And everyone, we all can have testimonies. I've heard some testimonies of people who was on their last, or they completely out, and God came through. Because he's always there for us. We just might not recognize it. Amen. Verse, verse 9, it says, honor the, honor the Lord with thy substance and with thy first fruits of all thine increase. 
Verse 10, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty and 